Today, we want to look at a verse that has often been a great encouragement to many believers, especially those in difficult situations. Although this verse primarily refers to Israel, we can also apply it to ourselves today. Let's take a closer look at the individual parts of this verse and read Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The Jewish people were in Babylonian captivity. The, this captivity was the result of their disobedience and their following other gods. They had turned away from God and God had therefore used the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar to lead the people into captivity and away from the land of Israel. On the one hand, God had to punish his people. On the other hand, he had to correct them in order to lead them back into fellowship with himself. God had in mind to humble the Jews only for a certain time under the circumstances of captivity. After 70 years, the captivity was to end and the people would be allowed to return to the land of Israel. When God sends this message to the people through Jeremiah, he connects it with this wonderful message of this verse. First of all, it is encouraging to know that God has thoughts about his ancient people and us as well. He has a definite plan for everyone and he is aware of the thoughts at all times. He knows his own thoughts. He does not forget the plan he has for us. This also means that he is in control of everything at all times. He knows the beginning and the end of everything. Every individual is so important to him that he is the subject of God's thoughts. God is personally concerned with you and me. Isn't that wonderful? Secondly, God shows us his heart and talks about his thoughts. He tells us what thoughts he has about us. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. God never wants to harm or torment anyone because that is not the character of God. No, he has thoughts of peace for us. He himself is the God of peace and will therefore always think and act accordingly. Now, this does not mean that believers do not have to suffer. That would be the wrong conclusion. But if a believer suffers, then God has a good purpose for it. We do not always know God's plan when someone suffers. But we can trust him that he, in his wisdom and omniscience, only allows what will bring us closer to him. Sometimes he corrects us. Sometimes he takes preventive action to preserve us. And sometimes he only wants to make himself greater and more glorious to us. Because we know our God and accept his good intentions with us in faith and hold on to them in all hardships and difficulties, his peace in our hearts will dispel the worries, doubts and fears. This conscious letting go and surrendering ourselves into the hand of God is absolutely necessary in every difficulty so that we can victoriously get through these difficult times with spiritual strength in the presence of the Lord. Letting go in this sense does not mean uncertainty but certainty. In everything that happens, we know that God always brings his plan and his thoughts to completion. Nothing and no one can prevent him from doing so. He is also never taken by surprise because he knows everything in advance. Because this God is our very own God and we trust him completely, it gives us a future and a hope. A future because he can change the situation at any time and we are safe in his hands and a hope because everything here on earth is only temporal but in the eyes of God everything is directed towards eternity 
This should encourage us to preserve in difficult circumstances.